Yo, what's up? This is Craven, an open world game I'm working on in the Godot game engine. In it, I want to have a bunch of grass the player and other entities can walk through and interact with. In this video, I'll talk about how I achieved that, how I got there, and hopefully you can take something out of it. My first idea was to use a multi-mesh instance 2D, rendering grass sprites and assign them a shader that makes them sway. Since I'm planning on having a lot of grass, it made sense for me to have the grass live on the GPU, just like you would for 3D grass. But as it turns out, multi-mesh instances don't work with Ysort, so objects were all hidden behind the grass or all rendering on top of it. My next idea was to set an area where we want the grass in the editor and then spawn some grass sprites inside those shapes. I thought, surely it can't be that hard to write my own 2D node scattering library, optimize it down to the last millisecond, get frustrated and quit, come back later, make compromises, optimize again, get frustrated again, only for it to dawn on you that maybe this was a terrible idea in the first place? Yeah, turns out instancing a new node for every little grass cluster is a lot of objects. Instancing grass on the CPU side just wasn't gonna work. So, I decided to scrap everything and have the grass live on the GPU again. How? Well, this gentleman over here, Captain Proton, just so happens to have written a little shader doing something very close to what I want. The shader itself is written for Godot 3, but I can easily translate it to Godot 4. The only caveat is that it's meant for static scenes, so no moving cameras or zooming, so there was a lot of work ahead of me. And after a lot of fiddling with shader code and a shitty code editor, this is the setup I came up with. I have a color rect, covering areas in my game I know there will be grass, and gave it this top-down grass shader. You first define a sampler to the uniform and assign it a viewport texture. This viewport contains all the areas we want there to be grass. It will be mostly black, with the red channel corresponding to the height of the grass at that position. We also add a camera, following our main camera's position and zoom. This makes sure our grass texture is always aligned with the main view. The main bulk of the shader happens in this for loop. For each pixel, we iterate over the pixels underneath it one by one, and sample the blade length there. If the blade length is equal to the distance traveled, that means this pixel has a grass blade tip, so we want to color the pixel and break out of the loop. Otherwise, it means we're somewhere along the blade, so we set our color to the stem color. And of course, if there's no grass there, skip it. We also want to account for the main camera's zoom, so we'll make a global uniform for that. We can then update this uniform every frame like so. And that's the basic idea. We can then go on to make adjustments, like making the stem a gradient, we can make the grass sway, World Puzz is the global position of the crate fragment. And we can also add wind. I just ripped this function off of Captain Proton.
You may notice here that we're getting artifacts at the bottom of the screen. This happens because it's trying to read values that are off screen, but the graph texture is only as big as, well, the screen. So let's make it bigger by zooming our grass texture camera out and then zooming it back in while sampling the shader. The difference now is that the shader has data it can sample outside of the screen. Let's zoom it out by, let's say, half. You could set this to any amount as long as it's big enough. And we now have to account for the zoom difference in the shader. Now, we need to make it so objects can be covered by grass. For this, we have another shader with similar logic. We first color the sprite normally, and get the current pixel's height in the sprite. If you're using a sprite sheet, use this line instead and set how many rows your sprite sheet has as a uniform. Then, we loop each pixel below the sprite, and sample the blade length there. If the blade is longer than this total traveled height, the pixel is below the blade tip, so we hide it. Next, we want those grass blades to wave as well. So we sample the noise just like before, but instead of adding it to base UV, we'll add it directly to the blade length. Of course, we only want to do so if there is grass there. And that's it. Keep in mind that both shaders' waves need to be synchronized or else it'll look janky. So I just made the wave-related variables global, and I have a grass manager script that handles setting those per scene if I ever need to. From here, it's not too hard to make an editor tool that makes adding grass easier. In my case, I just have the grass manager handle that. And that's it for this video. If you want to see more stuff that's a mix between haha <laughs> funny programming jokes and deep yet incoherent thoughts at 5am, uh, subscribe! <laughs>